In the year 1920, two men once found a brick in a deserted area. Curious to know how a brick ended up in the place, they began an archaeological excavation. To their surprise, they found an ancient city buried under the ground. John Marshall and R. D. Banerjee were the two men. They were happy for the discovery of the ancient city of Mohenjo-daro. But this city has become the roots of many questions and yet to solve mysteries. So in this video, let us discuss about this ancient city of Mohenjo-daro and completely discuss about the mysteries of the Indus Valley civilization. The ruins of the ancient city are The ancient city of Mohenjo-daro is one of the first urban centers of human history. Indus Valley Civilization, which is the first time in India. This interview series is to help those of you who are unfamiliar with Indian history and civilization to get a better understanding of what it's all about. So, let's begin. Interestingly, John Marshall and R.D. Banerjee were not the first ones to find such a civilization in the Indian subcontinent. In the year 1853, the British officer named Alexander Cunningham discovered the ancient Harappan civilization. These ancient civilizations were found in the banks of the river Indus and its tributaries. Hence, John Marshall coined the term Indus Valley Civilization. We see a lot of interesting things in this civilization. Let us divide these things in three sectors. Urban planning, trade and agriculture, and culture and art. If we talk about the urban planning, we can say that the people of these civilizations were so technologically advanced that they made this civilization stand for more than 700 years or 7 centuries. Yes, you heard it right. From 2600 BCE to 1900 BCE, this civilization stood still. Their streets and buildings were arranged in a grid pattern. They had advanced sewage and drainage systems. Every house in this civilization had an indoor bathroom. Every house had its individual wells and pipes. Talking about the agriculture and trade, the people of the Indus Valley civilization practiced intensive agriculture, which means production of our crops in a commercial rate. Since they had an very advanced irrigation system, they could grow crops like wheat, barley, and cotton. They also had trade relations with other civilizations in the world, like the Mesopotamia civilization and the Persian Gulf present in the central part of the modern Asia. They traded artifacts, jewelry, gems, precious stones, and also the agricultural produce. But how can we say that the people of the Indus Valley civilization had trade relationships with the other civilizations like Mesopotamia? Well, the people in the Indus Valley civilization practiced a particular script known as the Indus script. It was present in only the Indus Valley civilization. But when the archaeologists performed the excavations in the Mesopotamia areas, they found the same Indus script in the Mesopotamia civilizations also. From this, we can say that there were trade relations with Indus civilization and the Mesopotamia ones. So talking about the last sector, which is the culture and art, we can say that the people of the Indus Valley civilization performed the caste practices. Yes, there were caste systems back in those times of the Indus Valley civilization. We can say this by observing the seals and scriptures of the Indus Valley civilization. You can see that in this seal, there is a larger man on the throne, like he may be a king or a superior caste one, and there is a smaller man or the uh, people belonging to the inferior caste bowing to him. By this, we can say that there was a caste system in the Indus Valley civilization's time. Many traditional practices have also been depicted on the seals of the Indus Valley civilization. Talking about the art, we have found various artifacts in this civilization which depicts how advanced they were. You can see this toy of a bullock cart, which means they use the bullock carts in their agriculture. You can also see other famous artifacts of the Indus Valley civilization, like these. So now we have a basic overview of the civilization, how advanced they were and how they performed their everyday practices. Now let us see the major part of this, the mysteries of the Indus Valley civilization. So what are the mysteries that we can see in this civilization? There are many two mysteries. One is the Indus script and the other one is how this civilization came to an end. Talking about the Indus script, 
This is a very unique script that the archaeologists have found in this time. Various scripts which have been found in the ancient civilizations of Mesopotamia, China, Persian Gulf, or the Greek have been easily decoded by the archaeologists. The most interesting case of the decoding can be seen in Egypt civilization. The script which was used in the Egypt was known as the Egyptian script or the Egyptian hieroglyphic. So the story is the archaeologists actually found an inscription which is famously called as the Rosetta Stone. The uniqueness of this Rosetta Stone is that it had both the inscriptions of Greek as well as the Egyptian hieroglyphic. We already knew how to decode the Greek language. Hence, the archaeologists actually compared this Greek language with the Egyptian hieroglyphic which was also present in the Rosetta Stone. Hence, they could easily decode the Egyptian hieroglyphic. But the problem with the Indus script is that no Rosetta Stone has been found yet. The Indus script actually contains various symbols and patterns instead of letters. More than 400 distinct signs and symbols have been found by the archaeologists in the Indus script. Even though this number is large, only 4 or 5 characters out of all these characters were used to make a single sentence, as you can see in this sense. If we talk about the seals, they were very tiny, only about 1 inch of length. Hence, too many letters could not be fit into the seals. So the script writers actually tried to adjust these letters in the seal. If you remember your childhood, you can actually understand this easily. While writing, when you run out of your space, you try to make the letters more compact so that you, it completes in the same layers. The same problem arose when the Indus script writers were performing their work. Actually, they ran out of space on the left side. So, they made the letters in the left side more compact. By this, we can say that the script writers actually wrote from right to left, like Arabic or Urdu. The Indus script was used to make inscriptions on seals or clay tablets. Clay or wax were some of the materials which was used to make the seals and tablets. Now, if you observe various seals of the Indus Valley civilization, you can observe that there is an animal or figure or a human being depicted below the Indus script. Archaeologists and found the main reason for this depiction. Many of you know this seal, right? If you observe this seal, you can see an inscription and below that there is a weird animal which uh, modern archaeologists call it as a unicorn which may have gone extinct later. The people of the Indus Valley civilization use this script for trade or other administrative purposes. Recently, the archaeologists have been saying that the people of the Indus Valley civilization use the logo syllabic form of writing. Now what is this logo syllabic form of writing? This is a type of writing which includes the meanings and sounds of a particular letter. Other archaeologists believe that this writing was used in astronomy and astrology too. For example, if you see this inscription, you can find a fish like character in the beginning and later there are six sticks, which means Aru Mino in Dravidian language. This actually represents a constellation. In a similar way, there is an another inscription which is called Me Mino which means the planet Saturn. This is the reason why many archaeologists compare the Indus script to the Dravidian script. Attempts are still being made to actually decode this language. Let us hope that the script which was used by our ancestors can speak to us one day. Now let us talk about the second main mystery, which will remain as a mystery for years to come. That is, how did the civilization actually end? We saw that this civilization had a good urban planning, it had good trade relationship, it performed various activities like agriculture, but why did this civilization end? There are various theories suggesting this. The main theory suggests that the Indus Valley civilization had to face a huge flood which was caused by the river Indus tributary. Hence, the civilization had to end. There are other theories supporting this, like there was a severe climate change and this caused drought in the area and the river Indus dried up. Hence, there was no agriculture and the people of the Indus Valley civilization died out of famine. Another major theory is that this civilization had to face an indo aryan invasion from the Central Asian part. Hence, they had been killed by the indo aryan 
we also previously saw that this civilization practiced the caste system. So, it is said that the people of this civilization had been killed due to internal strife and conflict. It is said by many archaeologists, due to the trade relations between other countries, this trade also caused the transfer of various harmful diseases which caused to the end of the civilization. Here comes the major part of the mystery. Some archaeologists have found various skeletons in the Mohenjo-daro. The famous skeleton is that the baby holding a mother's hand. This indicates that there was a sudden disaster which completed with a wink of an eye and people unknowingly have been killed. To support this theory, there has been also another scientific discovery. The scientists have found high amount of radioactive material in the bones of the skeleton. This radioactivity is equivalent to the amount of radioactivity released by the nuclear bomb which was thrown on the Hiroshima Nagasaki area. So it is said by various archaeologists that there was an emission of poisonous gas which engulfed the whole civilization into its mouth, killing all the people in their beds. So, what happened after the civilization ended? Few of the survivors of the disaster actually escaped and migrated towards the eastern and southern India. Their descendants later called to be known as North Indians and South Indians. So what can we learn from this story? There are various conflicts and strife about the Northern India, Southern India, caste divisions, etc. But we all belong to the same ancestor who worked hard for their lives. So there is a famous Sanskrit sloka, Vasudaiva Kutumbaka, which means the people of the whole world belong to the same family. So we should live with mutual trust and brotherhood to make a better future.